in M. Ragaraj, the court also applied the principles of quantifiable data and creamy layer, even in case of scheduled tasks and scheduled tribe. The correctness of the same was considered by Jarnel Singh. So, Jarnel Singh held that insofar as applicability of quantifiable data on the backwardness insofar as scheduled tasks and scheduled tribes is concerned, M. Nagaraj was not correct. However, insofar as the applicability of creamy layer principle even to scheduled caste and scheduled tribe is concerned, it upheld the view taken in Amraj. In doing so, Janel Singh is basically relying on the judgment of seven judge bench of this court in NM Thomas. The view taken in Janel Singh has also been approved in Davinder Singh. The correctness of the view taken in Janel Singh and Davinder Singh is not questioned. However, in the present reference, we are dealing with the question about equality amongst the group of unequal, I find it appropriate to consider the third issue also. Putting the children of the parents from the scheduled caste and scheduled tribe on account of benefit of reservation have reached a high position and ceased to be socially, economically and educationally backward and the children of parents doing manual work in the villages in the same category could defeat the constitutional mandate. However, I may observe that taking into consideration that the constitution itself recognizes the scheduled caste and scheduled tribe to be the most backward sections of the society. The parameters for exclusion from affirmative action of the persons belonging to this category may not be the same as applicable to other classes. If a person from such a category, by buying the benefit of reservation, achieved a position of a tune or maybe a sweeper, he would continue to belong to a socially, economically, and educationally backward class. At the same time, people from this category, who after having availed the benefits of reservation, have reached the high echelons in life, cannot be considered to be socially, economic, and educationally backward, so as to continue availing the benefit of affirmative action. They have already reached a stage where on their own accord, walk out of the special provisions and give way to the deserving and needy. I may again fully refer to the observation of Dr. B. R. Ambedkar. I quote, history shows that where ethics and economics come in conflict, victory is always with economics. Western interests have never been known to have willingly divested themselves unless there was sufficient force to compel them, unquote. I am therefore of the view that the state must evolve a policy for identifying the criminal layer even in the scheduled caste and scheduled tribe so as to exclude them from the benefit of affirmative action. In my view, only this and this alone can achieve the real equality as enshrined under the Constitution. I read my conclusion. I therefore hold that E.V. Chinaya held that subclassification among the scheduled caste for the purpose of giving more beneficial treatment to a group in the larger group of the scheduled caste is not permissible, does not lay down a good law. That subclassification among the scheduled caste for giving more beneficial treatment is permissible in law. That while doing so, the state will have to justify that the group for which more beneficial treatment is provided is inadequately represented as compared to other castes in the said list. That while doing so, the state will have to justify the same on the basis of empirical data that a subclass in whose favor such more beneficial treatment is provided is not adequately represented. That however, while providing for subclassification, the state would not be entitled to reserve 100% seats available for scheduled castes in favor of a subclass to the exclusion of other castes in the case that such a classification would be permissible only if there is a reservation for a subclass as well as a larger class. That the finding of M. Nagaraj, Jandil Singh, and Devinder Singh to the effect that criminal air principle is also applicable to scheduled castes and scheduled tribes lays down the correct position of law. That the criteria for exclusion of the criminal air from the scheduled caste and scheduled tribes for the purpose of affirmative action would be different from the criteria as applicable to the other backward classes. Before I part with that, my judgment, I place on record my deep appreciation for the valuable assistance rendered by the learned constant apparition.